Hey guys and welcome in our studio in Emmeloord for another episode of Digital Classroom. Today it's all about compositing, making cutouts really, really fast. So join us for today's episode of Digital Classroom. Now, I'm not big on retouching and I'm certainly not big on doing composites. A lot of my friends do it and I always wonder like, it looks so incredibly natural. How do you do it? Well, in all honesty, they do a lot of Photoshop work. And for me, I'm more a photographer that takes the shot and it has to be right in camera. I like to do a little bit of color change or take out some stuff that I really can't do on the set, but that's about it. But if you are one of those guys that want to do cutouts and that want to do whole composites, or maybe you're in product photography and you just want it fast, the software we're going to review today that will absolutely be exactly what you're looking for. Today we're going to take a look at the new Topaz AI. What is AI? Artificial intelligence. So is this really smart software? Well, I can already tell you it is. The AI part actually means that you can detect objects yourself. Sounds like magic? It actually does. So let's dive into Photoshop and let's just show you guys what you can do with Topaz Remask AI. Okay, we are at the moment in Mask IE from Topaz. This is still the beta, so stuff will change, of course, for the final release, but it's very, very close. Now, you can see that we have three different colors. Blue is compute, green is keep, and red is cut. You can do brushes or you can do paint buckets. Now, in all honesty, when you see something AI, it means artificial intelligence, right? So what is intelligent about this system? Of course, the compute area, but why not make it automatically? Wouldn't it be awesome that you have software that will actually detect your model and will do the cutout for you? Well, let's see if that works because we see something auto here. So do detect objects and let's see how smart artificial intelligence is. Well, that's fast. So it's pretty, pretty fast, but you do see some problems over here. So just do that yourself. So say, okay, let's compute this area. And this can be also a little bit more tight. And of course here. But overall, it does a really, really good job. And of course we tested it on some other images and it does very well. So do a compute mask. And there you are. And zoom in and see the result. This is pretty impressive, right? Okay, now let's say that you want to change some stuff. You can always go to your edge. So you can do edge softness, edge shift, foreground recovery, defringing. But overall, look at this, you don't even need that. So it looks really, really well. And that was the auto setting. Now let's see if that also works great on another image that's a little bit more complicated. Okay, here we have of course the big stuffed animal. So let's see what works now. So let's go to mask. Let's go to detect objects. And there we go. So you see that it is a little bit of problems over here, but that's no problem at all, of course, because you can change everything. And that's the cool thing about this software. You just say compute. Now I know I want to keep everything in the middle, so just use your fill tool. There you go. So that part I do have to brush out. So I want to make sure that I keep this. Okay. And now just take your brush and make it a little bit smaller for what you want to cut out. And you can be a little bit sloppy with this. I'm going to show you in a second why. Because now I'm going to use the brush for compute and that's a smaller brush. And you can change the brush sizes of course yourself and just do it like this. Now if you make mistakes with this program it's probably your own fault in all honesty because it really works like a charm. So like for example here. Okay, so I adjusted my selection a little bit. And just be careful with this, that you literally just hit everything in the way that you want it. And compute mask. Now I'm not an expert in Photoshop, so when I do something like this in Photoshop, it will take me a little bit longer. And when we do more complex stuff, of course, it takes a lot longer. And this is just here again really really nice selection i don't have to change a lot i actually think i don't have to change anything it looks really really cool now you can of course still let me 
undo. You can of course still change things like for example if you say okay I want some more detection here or here you can just change the mask here let me just show you. Let me say that I want to cut something out. Uh, let's zoom out a little bit. Let's say I want to lose this part which of course you don't but the moment I let go of my tablet it will start computing the mask and it will take that part out as you can see here. And of course we want to keep this. But you can change your masks on the go and that makes it really, really powerful. So absolutely love this auto detect function. Now as you can see that went really, really well. Only with the second image there was a little bit of a conflict between is this a part you want to keep or not. But with the brushes you can very, very easily correct this. Now let's dive into Photoshop with an image that's a little bit more difficult. Ok, let's give the computer a little bit more of a hard time. I shot this during Photoshop World in a booth with my cell phone. So it doesn't really look nice and it's very, very crowded on the side. So for a cutout or a composite this isn't a very good shot. But let's see first what happens when we do the auto detect. And probably it will mess up as you can see here. So that doesn't work. Ok, reset to cut. And now let's first start with keep. So I'm going to do this, I'm just going to go around uh, the edges. I'm going to show you a slightly different way in which you can use this software. And it's very personal, some people will start with compute, I start with keep. Okay. Now just take your paint bucket or your fill tool, there we go. And now I'm using compute and compute is a little bit more uh, secure. You have to watch a little bit more for details, I mean. At the moment I'm doing this very, very rough. Because I just want to show you how powerful the software is. When you really dive in and you go one on one you can do it a lot better and a lot faster probably with the computing. Let's just say that you are only using a mouse and you don't want to zoom in, you just want to do it fast, right? So this is more like a worst case scenario, being very, very sloppy, very, very fast. And if this works, well, if you take a little bit more time everything will work. So compute mask. And voila, there you go. Under here it's a little bit sloppy. So let's zoom in there and I'll show you what I mean. So here I was a little bit too sloppy. So let's say I want to keep, okay, let's make the brush a little bit smaller. Let's now really dive into the details. So first I'm doing it sloppy. As you can see as soon as I let go of my tablet it starts calculating. So let's not do that again. Now use cut. As you can see as I'm painting it actually makes the mask a lot, lot nicer. And these tones are really, really close to each other so that it actually works already surprises me because this is not a really high resolution shot. It was done with my cell phone so there's a lot of noise and all the colors actually blend together as you can see and still the selection looks pretty cool. And do remember when you do compositing there aren't any solutions out there that will do it 100% that you don't have to do anything. You always have to do a little bit of adjustments yourself. But this really, really helps a lot with speed. Ok, now we're going to use the compute brush just on these sides. And there you go. The only thing we now have to do is just make this a little bit nicer in Photoshop and you're done. And of course this you can do but then you have to dive in and the video will be too long. But you can see the power of this new artificial intelligence from Topaz. And it really works like a charm. Really nice. 
And there you go. Now again, just dive in and do these parts, but I just want to show you how incredibly powerful the software can be and how fast you can work. Even if you don't have any knowledge of compositing, this software just helps you out a lot. And it's quickly became one of my favorite things to play with, although I hardly any do any composites. I just love playing with it. Because it's so much fun. Okay, let's go back to the studio. Now, I really want to stress this to you guys. The image I just used, it's incredibly difficult because one, it was shot on a cell phone. Two, it wasn't the highest resolution. It was very, very dark, so it's a lot of grain. And in all honesty, when you look at the feet, there was a lot of noise there. There's a lot of shadow there. The, the shoes are already black. So making a cutout there is incredibly difficult. Now, what you saw me doing in the video is actually that I'm doing the cutout on full view. So I'm not even going one on one, I'm just doing it full view, so that's, you can't do it more rough. And the reason I'm doing it that way is because I want to show you guys that you don't have to zoom into pixel level for this software. You just do it as you see on the screen, you just make that selection and the program is smart enough that it actually works. Now if you're doing a serious compositing and you don't need the speed, but you just love to do it perfectly, please go into 100% and then use that compute brush just along the edges. You will love the outcome. We tried it with the veil from a bride and even the veil from the bride is 100% translucent. But that takes you a little bit more time. So it's not just as easy as just brushing over it. Then you have to really dive in and just do a little bit more work. Let's say five minutes or 10 minutes. Okay, so a few tips for you guys that I picked up along the road about compositing. When you want to do compositing, there are a few things you have to realize. When you take the image of your backdrop, make sure that you watch the lighting. And that means that if you shoot something, for example, uh, a wall, and the lighting comes from this side, make sure that when you're in the studio, you also light your model from that side. It sounds obvious, but a lot of people forget this, and it just looks weird. Another thing is, and that's something actually Matt Klaskowski told me, when we were walking in Amsterdam, I saw him taking some pictures of backdrops. And he told me, when I take a picture of a model, I already know which backdrop I'm gonna use, and I know how I shot that backdrop. And it sounds very obvious, but just imagine this. You're shooting a backdrop from eye level. Now, as soon as you put a model in front of it, you're shooting from a lower angle. That may work, but it also may not. And this is something that, especially when you do a lot of composites, I would highly stress you guys to do. Don't shoot a backdrop on a 12mm and then shoot your model on, for example, a 70mm. So if you know that you shoot your model mostly full bodies on 24mm and you're shooting a backdrop for a full body, make sure that you shoot that backdrop on 24mm. If you know I'm using backdrops for, for example, portraiture and I'm always shooting that on 70 shoot that backdrop on 70 and try to get the same angle under which you shoot your model. So that means that if you shoot your model from a lower angle, that you have actually have some converting verticals. Now, of course, you can do that in Photoshop, but yeah, I would do it on location and just do it right, right away. And another tip that I got from actually Joel Grimes, if you do a cutout, and this is something that really works well, I always do my cutouts against bright white backdrops. And the reason is very simple. When I do my cutout and I have my backdrop and my model in front, I always draw a little bit of a, you know, a, a, a cloud behind my model with white. Then I blur that white and I lower the opacity. And that way it just looks like that model is really merging with the backdrop. It sounds a little bit weird, but you create like a sandwich. Your model, the cutout, that white cloud around your model, and then the backdrop. And you lower that opacity a lot. The thing is, when you shoot a cutout against a white backdrop, it can be that there's a little bit of white around the hairs. By using that little bit of blurry cloud on the back, you actually diminish that result. So that's awesome tip from Joel Grimes. Overall, Topaz AI, if you're not into compositing and you think it's scary and Photoshop is a little bit intimidating, Topaz AI is a very, very fast way to do cutouts really nicely. When you're into product photography, the auto mask is insane. It will save you so much work. So check out Topaz AI. It's just been released and I highly, highly recommend it. And this is software that I'm gonna use a lot in the future because it's just so incredibly easy. Okay, 
leave comments below if you want to know anything more about Topaz or if you want me to do other videos. And of course, subscribe to our channel, smash that like button because we really like that. But most of all, tell other people about our channel so we can grow. See you again next time.